Hi guys, this is Griffpatch. Welcome back to part 10 of our scrolling platform or tutorial for Scratch. In this episode, we're looking at adding the much requested feature, wall jumping. Luckily for us, this is really quite easy to script, mainly because we added in player momentum in the previous episode. That was part nine of this series. Right, let's begin by moving over to the change player X by custom block, then scroll down till you see the change Y by minus 12. Okay, we're going to add in an if else block. And in the top part, we're going to add in an if key pressed for the up arrow, or whatever key you're using for jump. Then we want another if else in here, and then check greater than, and check the speed x is greater than zero. Now we need a set, and we're gonna set speed x to be minus 16, and then below that in the else, set it to 16. And we also, underneath this if, want to set in air to zero. Now in the else, we want to set speed x to zero. Now drag this in just below the change y by minus 12, like so. Just clean up these scripts. Okay, so what's happening here? So this is in the change player x by custom block. This is called when we move the player left and right. So if we're touching a platform when we move left and right, then we try first to see whether we can just move up and down, which is if we're walking up a slope. If it uh, doesn't manage to do that, so in other words, we've hit a wall, then we go back to where we were. But then now, when we hit a wall, we're allowing us to wall jump. So we check to see if we're pressing up for a wall jump. So if we've hit a wall and we're pressing the up key, we see which direction we were moving in. If we were moving to the right, we now jump to the left. So we check, set the speed to the left here. If we were moving to the left, we now set the speed to the right. So we'll bounce to the right. At the same time, we set to say that we are now have been in the air for nothing, which means we're actually starting a new jump. And lastly, if we're not jumping, we set the speed to zero. So we've hit a wall, we don't want it to be moving in any direction. And then we do the normal collision detection to push us out of the wall again. So that should, in theory, be it. Let's give it a go. So before we can do that, we need to just make the level a little bit more interesting so we can actually do some wall jumps. So let's go into the main costume and let's make a bit of new platform. I'll make a wall that goes up here like so. Okay, let's run that. So here's my character as normal. Hit a wall and look at that. We have basic wall jumping. Simple as that, huh? So with this wall jumping, you can of course go completely wild and design this level exactly as you want it to be. Um, we can make it a bit more interesting and add in another wall up here like this. Let's try that now. Okay, so now, there we go. Yeah, that could be quite fun. Now, let's see if I can reproduce something that people have noticed on this platforming engine. If I can jump high enough, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can actually go slightly through the floor here. And in fact, if I get fast enough, I will actually be able to jump right through the floor, um, which is obviously not a very good idea. Um, I don't think I'm going quite high enough at the moment to see that. Let's see if I can make the level even higher. Okay, let's try that. Okay, here I go. And we're going down, there we go. So what happened there was I actually was able to go right through the bottom of the level and it got very confused. Okay, so we can solve that because the problem is we're going traveling so fast that it can't detect the platform as we go through it. And that's easy to fix simply by going to the uh, tick custom block. Here it is. Here we are. We're changing speed Y by minus two. This is where we're adding gravity in. All we need to do is add an if around that change SY like this. 
and then check to see that speed y is greater than minus 20. This means if speed y ever gets less than minus 20, it won't fall any faster. So let's just try that again. That's good. Brilliant. And one more fix to make while we're still at it, and this is actually a scratch three issue, is that we can speed up our scripts quite a bit simply by adding a new sprite, which we'll just call blank, although it doesn't need to be called that. And then you just move that as the very first sprite in the game. So there we go, completely blank. We could add a comment saying, this is blank scratch three feature. If you go back to the player sprite here, what happens when you're playing a game is you'll see that here, this sprite here has the yellow board around it showing that it's running. And it takes Scratch a bit of time to actually draw that yellow border. And if your sprite that you're currently selecting is the first sprite, even if you're not playing it in the project editor like this, the game runs slower because it's having to draw these yellow borders. So by having a blank sprite selected, there's no scripts that need to be highlighted, and the game runs as fast as it possibly can. And you might find that that actually helps speed up some of your games. I had to go through a load of my old projects adding these blank sprites, and it helped me a lot. So that's it. Have fun with that wall jumping um, and I'll see you next time for another tutorial. Subscribe to the channel, like the video and uh, this is Griff Thanks for watching. Bye.